Hi there, if you already watched the video on the actual experiment on how to take data, you're ready to take a look to see how the data processing looks for kinetic energy of collisions. Let's fade over to um, my other screen. Just one second, let me get it up and ready. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, fade. So here I've, what I did is I dragged the two files, the inelastic and the elastic file, and just dropped them in the workspace, and then I click clicked uh, uh, next and then and then uh, finish so that's a little auto wizard pops up and that's uh, what you can do now we're going to find the derivative like we did the last week and the week before this time we're not going to worry about the first cell and the last cell uh, because we're going to zoom in around the collision itself so I'm going to go ahead and select the first one analysis differentiate default set this to auto and then it just a new one and this is going to be VX1. Now also notice right here I have my masses here. And for both of my for both my inelastic and elastic, I decided to use the heavier cart hitting the lighter cart. You can choose either one you want. It's the data is going to look just a little bit different. And so now I'm going to select the second one and analysis default. And it says auto new. Okay, so this is going to be uh, V x2. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now just to let you know the blue carts are a little heavier. They all weigh about the same. Uh, about 0 0.480 kilograms. And the green carts all weigh about the same. So about 0 0.328, 0 0.329, something in that range. Now that I got two velocities, uh, let me go ahead and put in units. Uh, meters, meters, meters per second. And then I can copy that one over, control C, control V. I can find the kinetic energies and um, the errors in the kinetic energies, two, three, four, five, six. But to find the errors of the kinetic energies, I'm gonna to need to know the error of the uncertainty of the velocity. So I'm gonna do that by making a quick plot. I'm gonna select those two cells, click the three dots. I don't really need to make the points smaller, but I will apply. Now I'm going to select this region right down here. Although I could take this region right here and it's a little bit bumpy, um, but I'm going to take this region down here. So I'm going to use the pool tool, the blue one, and I'm going to draw a little box around that data. And then I'm going to do the statistics button, statistics on column button, to find what the standard deviation is. And you see it's already checked. I can uncheck everything, but it's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and hit okay and look at the report. So I got 3.49 e to the 4. And you might want to round that up, but no, you don't really need to. It's just 3 e to the 4. So I'm going to come back over to my first tab, and I'm going to say SD is equal to 3, 3 e to the negative 4 meters per second. And we can assume the two sensors record the data the same way, so I'm just going to use that for both of them. Okay, now with that, we can do kinetic energy 1. We can do uh, error in kinetic energy 1. We can do kinetic energy 2. And we can do error in kinetic energy 2. We can do uh, kinetic energy total. And we can do error in kinetic energy total. And we can say joules for all of them. So I'm just going to quickly control C, control V, all the way down. Great. Now kinetic energy, one half mv squared. We're just going to go ahead and put a one half times m times v squared. I know it's easy, but that way I remember to put that. It's the physics model. So now I'm down here in the formula. I'm going to do one half times it by mass, and the, this is going to be the first one. So 0 0.4802, but use your own mass, and then I'm going to times it by d squared. Now the uncertainty in that is going to be just the mass, 0 0.4802, times it by the velocity column, that's column d, times it by the uncertainty. My uncertainty was 3e to the negative 4. 3, 3e to the negative 4. And my uncertainty is pretty small. Okay, so kinetic energy number two um, is going to be one half m, and so that's uh, 0 0.32, one half 
times it by 0 0.3285 times it by column E squared. And again, we're looking for the error and the kinetic energy is the same thing, so the, the mass 0 0.3825 times it by column E times it by column or times it by 3e to the negative 4. 3e to the negative 4. Finally, total energy is going to be column F plus H. And then the uncertainty of that is going to be the square root. SQRT of G squared plus I squared. All right, I have a mistake in there. I need to close off my parentheses. Okay, don't forget to change these to error bars. Set as error bars. I'm going to have to. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to make that smaller for just a second. Oh, it's still going to be too big. It's going to be in this menu right here. Set as error bars. But I have it bigger so that you can see what I'm doing. Now that they're all error bars, we can highlight all those six columns and control and hold down the first column. And then, boom, I'm going to double click here, symbol size three. Okay. Now, what we're concerned with right here is this, is this first part. Over here, one of the carts leave the sensor, and so we don't have good data. And so I'm going to zoom in. And for I, the front of my tape was a little bit messed up, so uh, I'm going to clean that up so that it can be used for lab. So I'm going to zoom in to right there. And this is where the collision occurs, right here just after one second. And um, the total energy dips down for just a second and comes back up. And then it keeps going. Now this waviness is due to the little mass of the spring. That when the big cart hits the little cart, that little spring bumper wiggles back and forth pretty quick. And so that's why it looks like energy is going in and out of the system. But we can still get a pretty good average. So I'm going to use this pool tool again, selection on active region. I'm going to select there. I'm going to try to get a good chunk of this right there, uh, about half to half. Oh, let's see. There we go. And then I'm going to do statistics on column to find out what standard error and the uncertainty is. So I'm going to do quantiles. This time I'm going to uncheck it and only check mean standard deviation standard error. And then down below, I'm going to uncheck that one as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to here because it's just off the screen and hit OK. Let's take a look. All right, so my numbers 553 and 553, they're pretty good. But to see what they are over here, let's calculate a z score really quick. Z score. This time, because we have two values with two uncertainties, um, then we have to divide by the square root of the sum of the squares. So this is going to be equal to, let me put it down here. Eh, you know what, on second thought, let's see, the formula is a little bit easier up here. ABS, and I'm going to do B. No, i got to do it up the top, sorry. Because I have to do this one minus this one. So this is going to be equal to ABS, and it's going to be B2, B1 minus B2, parentheses, divided by the square root, and it's going to be column D squared plus E quantity squared. And I must have made a mistake in there. Oh, D, sorry, it's D1 squared and then D2 squared. Click Enter. And I got a great Z-score. I hope you get a good Z-score too. All right, let's see the power of this worksheet. So if I come back over here to the first tab, I don't even have to really come back to the first tab, I can just rename this one right here, rename this one as elastic, and then I can come to this, uh, and then I can right click it, and I can duplicate. I'm going to rename this copy of right here, right click, rename as inelastic. Okay, now I can come to my inelastic data, and I can copy over my time and position data. And I can paste it right here. Now take special note, if you decided to swap the carts, change your masses between the two, and don't forget to change the masses in these calculation columns over here. But 
everything should have auto calculated. So I'm going to select that, hold down the control, and then the rest of those, click the three dots, double click the points, symbol size three. And this is right here is the collision that I'm interested in right there. So I'm going to zoom it just a little bit, just to about there. Now, you can see that we did lose some energy. Where did that energy go? Well, let's quantify to see how much energy we lost. So there's region one, two. And also notice this right here. Even though the carts are like bouncing back and forth each, total energy is pretty much flat. So now statistics on column. And once again, quantities, standard error. I can uncheck a few of these others that I don't really need. Quantities. And then back to here and hit OK. And let's go take a look at the results. And we saw on the graph that there they didn't match and we can see it lost about half its kinetic energy and that's definitely not within uncertainty we could do a z-score with if we wanted to or we could just find out what the difference is how much energy loss energy loss and that's going to be so that's going to be b b1 minus b2 Oops, I forgot the equals there. So we lost a little less than half the energy. Now, if we wanted to do a z-score, well, we lost half the energy, and look at how small this standard dv. We know it's not gonna, <laughs> not gonna be uh, that. So, anyways, that's the experiment. You're gonna be turning in your two graphs this time. Don't forget to include fancy titles like what. Um, what collision you had, which one's the blue cart, which one's the, the, uh, the black cart. For example, right here, my I could change things up just a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Um, so right now I have the kinetic energy one. I could change that to, um, let's do this, independent. And let's change this from the black because this was really the blue cart. Kinetic energy two. It's red, so that's right. And then kinetic energy, um, total kinetic energy, I could change that to black. Black. I should change this over there to um, cart one, cart one, cart two, and total energy or total kinetic energy, and then put in joules. Now I could do the same thing on the second graph if I wanted to. Uh, don't forget a fancy title. This is inelastic. Collision. The other one's an elastic collision. So the two graphs, and you should include uh, the results of this descriptive uh, statistics before and after energy loss for the one, and then for elastic, um, you're gonna be looking for that Z-score. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.